What is going on guys with the Gumps Podcast, episode number 13. My name is Kyle Gubber, and I hope you guys are enjoying your stay at the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Make sure you guys are following my Twitter, Gumps underscore videos, for the latest news and updates on my channel, guys. Uh, the reason why this is two days late, because if you guys don't know or are new to the channel, I post my podcast up every Thursday, but I was experiencing some minor chest pains. Uh, thankfully, the pain went away. Uh, there was no hiccups or anything like that, no... Uh, symptoms I need to be concerned about, so we are here back again. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy the video. Re right now, we only got two topics at hand that I really want to go in depth about. But the first topic, I'll just kind of—I won't say breeze over, but just kind of you know say what's happening and whatnot. Uh, for the longest time, uh, Deadpool Two was supposed to build up X Force, and I'm not going to spoil Deadpool Two if you guys haven't seen it or anything like that. But like, there was a couple jokes here and there about X Force, but um. They were still going to make an X Force movie. Uh, it was supposed to be, I think they said Deadpool three and then X Force. Now it is official that uh, X Force has been canceled. Um, a lot of people are upset, happy, whatever. There's a lot of like mixed emotions going on right now. People are happy because that means they're like, oh, it's going to Disney. Blah 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 blah. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. The reason why it's canceled, yeah, it's because of the the Disney deal with Fox and the merger and all that shit. Um, there's no way that they can get cameras on and finish the movie by 2020 because I think the deal is going to be set in stone by this year, and like everything is going to be like transferred by 2021, 2020, 2021, somewhere around there. But by the time X Force is made and like finished up and ready to hit theaters. It's going to be a Disney property by that time, and Disney is not going to want to release a rated R comic book movie. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the Disney execs or anything like that, but uh, I just don't think that they would. Um, and plus, it's Fox's decision. They're like, we'll, we'll scrap it, we'll cancel it, whatever. Disney, for whatever reason, Disney could pick it up, but like that's like in some else world story that's not going to happen in this reality because Disney has a brand to protect. I have not once seen them upload or like release anything that's rated R, um, nor will they ever because they're more child friendly than uh, most studios, uh, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to have seen the next worst movie with Domino, Deadpool, Cable, and all of them. I would have loved to seen all that stuff, but. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate. I was really excited to see it, um, but it's kind—it of, kind of sucks because I'm one of those guys that's really happy that we're gonna have everything uh, together to a certain extent. Now, I'm happy because we get to see on that rare, maybe very, very rare occasion. We'll see. I think they said that they're gonna keep Deadpool separate from the MCU and all that stuff. But uh, there's some crossover uh, like combinations I want to see with X-Men and, and the Avengers and stuff like that. But that's not going to happen for like until like 2025 at the earliest. That's at the earliest. But um, So I was excited to see that, but then you kind of think about like you're not going to get a Fox-style movie anymore. Uh, I love Disney. I love what uh, Kevin Feige has done with the MCU, but... There is a specific brand that they have with the uh, MCU, and then Fox has their own specific brand with the X-Men. Yes, sometimes it sucks, but then you get stuff like Logan, you get stuff like Days of Future Past, like the original two X-Men movies. They're, they're, you're not going to see stuff like that specifically made in the, into the MCU because it's so unique to its own style. Um, but... Let's just hope Kevin Feige treats the X-Men properties with a different kind of care. Like a different kind of care that he doesn't give like the original Avengers and stuff like that. Like the, the Avengers in general. Not saying like to treat the X-Men like less, but like just give him a different style, a different flavor. Like when he when it comes to problem solving it with the story uh, process, I'm hoping that he just like, you know thinks of a different route to make it more unique, like kind of have your own X-Men universe and then the year Avengers universe and kind of treat them differently. Um, but, and then it's, you got stuff like this where X-Force is not going to happen because of the uh, Disney uh, Fox merger. Um, it's unfortunate, but um, 
All we can do is just move forward. Next up, we got Spider-Man Far From Home. The trailer has been released, and my god, I freaking loved it. Before I get into, uh, you know, the whole spiel that I'm going to probably end up having, I'm not going to try to rage or anything like that. I'm not probably going to rage because it's kind of dumb if I raged. Um, but uh, what I loved about this trailer is because we actually got something. Um, we saw some story. We saw a lot more than I was actually anticipating on getting. We we got to see Nick Fury interacting with Spider Man, which is really cool because it brought me back to the uh, the Ultimate Spider Man. I think that was uh, released a couple years back with uh, Disney XD or some shit like that. With that had Iron Fist or whatever. You see Spider Man interacting with uh, Nick Fury a couple times here and there. I thought that shit was really cool. So this is the first time we really are interacting. Get to see the interactions with Spider-Man and Nick Fury. I think that's really freaking dope. I'm really happy to see that. Um, the one thing that shocked me the most was seeing Hydro-Man and Sandman. I think that's Sandman. And then uh, I, I had to look this one up. I'm not going to pretend like, oh, I'm a nerd. I know what this is. I, th um, I looked it up. I, I'm pretty sure that was Molten Man. Um, so basically people are just calling them the Elementals and stuff like that, which is pretty dope because... Um, not really. We haven't really seen it, at least to my knowledge, at this very second. We haven't really seen villains of elemental based, like in one movie, attacking a hero or stuff like that. Because I think elemental powers are so cool, and to see Spider Man have to go against all three of them, and then Mysterio is pretty dope. And then some people are are like are nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of having this in the back of my head. Like, is this gonna be a Spider Man three effect? Is this gonna be the Amazing Spider Man two effect? To me, I don't think so because um, I like there's a couple theories going around. Are these just conjurations of Mysterio to make him look like the good guy? Um, I'm pretty sure everyone is thinking that too. I'm like, when I first watch a trailer, I'm like, okay, he's trying to make himself look good, like the syndrome effect from the first Incredibles movie. Everyone's, pr I'm pretty sure, is saying that. So, it, like, here's my theory: is like either they're conjurations of him or they're actually them. But, like, helping him look good. At the end of the day, if I had to put money on one of the one or the other, my money was gonna is going to be on Conjurations. Um, and, which I'll be fine with, but, like, if it is actually them, like, it, if it's actually them, I will definitely be super excited. Because, like, you can easily make a Sinister Six movie by Spider-Man 3. You could. Uh, I'm not saying rush to it, please, for the love of God, don't rush it. But like I'm saying, like, sp like I I'm hoping, based off the success of Venom, based off the, the success of Into the Spider Verse, they keep Tom Holland and uh, the MCU for years to come. I'm talking about like he leaves the MCU when he's in his 30s, prepare to give the the reins to Miles Morales, and then that's when Tom Holland's Spider Man dies, and Miles Morales will t then take the lead. That's what I'm hoping, but. I'm hoping by like if they if he's staying in the MCU a lot longer than we all think, I hope that they uh, end up making a Spider-Man four or whatever and make that like the Sinister Six movie. But if they are keeping to the tradition of like each superhero is only getting like a third movie at max, uh, then do it with the third one because you can't go out on a bigger solo uh, trilogy than the Sinister Six because right now. To my knowledge, no one really has a fourth solo movie in the MCU. Yeah, that's right, because Iron Man was going to have a fourth one, but then, you know, Robert Downey Jr. just got way too expensive. Um, so, if you are going to stop at three, end it off with the Sinister Six, but if you're going to go one more, one extra mile, definitely go with the fourth one, because then you can get a little bit more build-up in there, and I think that stuff will be really, really dope. Um, but yeah, th like, that's my thoughts on the... Uh, the elemental stuff like that. I'm really excited to see Hydra Man. I mean, like, dude, that punch that Spider Man was dealt with Peter just got fucking punched by Hydra Man. I'm like, dude, that's gotta suck. I mean, like, when you get like a freaking hose and you get sprayed in the chest, that can hurt. I mean, like, it's getting like, imagine getting like the fire hydrant and turn that shit on. That shit blasts out, getting hit in the chest. You're gonna be left with some bruises. Tom Holland just got ex like just got wrecked by like a huge water monster. And got wrecked and got punched really effing hard. That's got to suck. And I, it's definitely going to be fascinating to see because it's something we really haven't seen him go against yet. 
and it's like, how do you beat someone that's made of water? How do you beat someone that's made of sand? How do you beat someone that's made of fire? Then how do you beat someone who's a master of illusions? Like that's why I'm really excited about this villains, this this rogues gallery because it's so unique on how you have to beat them. But the fact that they're so unique but still elemental based, that's why I also think that they're also um, uh, conjurations of Mysterio. But let's get back to let's get into Mysterio. Looks dope as shit uh they said it well thor and iron man hybrid but he looks like a asgardian uh which i am fine with because like they managed to make mysterio a badass not just visually but the way he moves around he's flying around shooting these like green lasers out of his hands it's like fucking dope um now this is bringing up a couple concerns with um with a couple fans some people are concerned like, oh, he's not like the comics and stuff like that. I'm going to stop you right there for the people who are saying that. The the villain from the comics is basically, I don't know too much about him, but like from what I've known, he's basically a movie effects guy and that's how he does all his stuff. You can't make a big budget movie. I mean, you could, you could, but it wouldn't be as exciting if you, he's just doing movie visual effects. I'm not saying that it has to be real, like it has to be true magic. I'm not saying that. No, what I'm saying is you gotta up the ante. You you just have to with Mysterio. Not making him a fucking god, making him Doctor Strange or anything like that. No, but you can't just make him have everything movie visual effects. And um, some people are mad about that, whatever, because it's not like the comics. But like, let's be honest, the MCU never does anything like the comics. Thor Ragnarok was not like the comics, because if it was like the comics, it would have been a lot darker. I mean, a lot darker. Um, but what do I think it is? Is it magic or is it uh, illusions? Um, it's tough to say, especially in that first trailer. But. Um, there's a couple images in the in the trailer that's making me think that it's actual magic. Uh, I think there's going to be a combination between magic and illusions. Um, but when you look carefully into the trailer, if you guys did any digging or watched the trailer multiple times, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it too. When he's using those green lasers, you see like a little image in there that looks like something out of Doctor Strange. So my theory is he's a visual effects artist, right? But he ends up finding pages of a book out from Doctor Strange, from Doctor Strange's library, right? And he's able to do like level one magic and stuff like that. So that's how he's able to do certain things, like make his illusions more realistic and able to make them able to interact and stuff like that. Um, so that is um, something I'm really excited to see how that unfolds and stuff like that. Um, there's one other thing I really have to get into. Um, I didn't get really any questions for my Twitter because I asked people like, hey, you got any questions for Twitter and stuff like that for my, my podcast, which I'll be covering uh, the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. Uh, I only had one person respond. His name is Scott Burnett. Uh, I, I know him from a uh, cool nerd show back in the day and stuff like that. Um, let me find the tweet really quick. Let's see. Let's see if I could find it uh, here. Okay. So um, I, re I tweeted out recording the podcast soon. Any of you have any questions about the far from home trailer? Um, this is going to go into some of my, uh, not anger, but disappointment, but uh, whatever. How not this one? He asked three questions. So the first question he asks is, "How is Spider-Man in Europe if he's dead?" Uh, well, two things. I don't think it's the first thing, but like I'm pretty sure it's the second thing. But first thing is that this is a prequel to Infinity War. It's as simple as that. And the next one is, he's not dead. He was unsnapped, like the comic books. Like let's be honest, comics and movies and stuff like that all have a freaking habit of unkilling their heroes it's not just dc it's also marvel as well but i'm not gonna point any fingers or anything like that because uh it's just gonna be a he said she said oh, like who did it worst scenario but like 
And there was a certain comic that kind of introduced that whole kill off your hero and then bring them back from the dead. And then guess what? Everyone started doing it. Everybody with every single character. It's insane. But whatever. Uh, so no one should really be surprised. And uh, I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, why is May okay with him being Spider-Man after he got vaporized on an alien planet? There's a couple theories I have with that. Um, first thing I got to say is, well, we got to watch the movie to figure it out. So it's as simple as that. But, uh, so since people feel like they need to have the answer to this, not, I'm not throwing shade on Scott or anything like that. That would be fucked up. No, I'm just talking about everybody else. Since pe- some, some people feel like they need to either know right now or never, or they just want it, like you'll have a theory. Uh, the theory is um, either after the snap, no one remembers. It's like kind of encased in like a vault in their mind. So they, a part of them remembers, but it's like also kind of been erased, like as if nothing has ever happened. Like Avengers Four will have time travel involved. It will have time travel involved. It's not been as it's been it's been there since the, they started recording the damn movie. Everyone knew this. So maybe they alter history and certain events change. Like, things are going to be different. Like, I'm, th- I'm thinking way different. So it's either they did that and they changed the way the, the course of history and Thanos does come down, but they end up beating him. Whatever it may be, it be that or they uh, – it's – just causes of the snap, they snap everybody back and just like their mind is kind of fixed and they don't remember. Uh, it's just those things, it's two things. So it's time travel or the snap doesn't have them remember. Now, going back to the Aunt May thing, why is she okay? Um, I think she's okay because, yet again, there's still a two hour movie that we have not seen. Plus, we don't know how far this is from. Spider-Man Far uh, Homecoming to Spider-Man Far From Home. We don't know that time gap. It could be six months. It could be a year. It could be whatever. Now, think of this as if this was real life. You have a child with extraordinary superpowers, right? You would be upset. You would be scared and whatnot. But no matter how hard you try to lock them away... It's already hard enough to, like, keep your teenage child. I'm not a parent, but, like, I was a teenager once, and I know a lot of teenagers. If your teenage child is locked away in a room, they're going to try to get out, regardless. If it be yelling at you, if it be just sneaking out, it could be whatever. It could be whatever. Wait until you're asleep. Doesn't matter. They're going to get out. Now, think about this. Your child not only is a teenager, but also has enhanced strength, enhanced agility, spidey sense, and has the ability to shoot webs because of the technology he's made and has the ability to climb walls. So, I feel like after this time period of like six months, maybe a year, God knows how long, eventually Aunt May had to come to the realization that she can't stop Peter. Because Peter is eventually just going to snap and say, I have to do it. Because he always does the good, he does things for the good, for the better, even if it means endangering his life and what whatnot. And I think Aunt May is going to eventually just kind of cave in, still be concerned, but help him out and be a support. Um, this is something we have not seen in the movies. And I get why some people are... I won't say mad, but concerned because this is the first time we're seeing Aunt May in a movie know Peter, knowing that her her nephew is Spider-Man and going out there getting his ass kicked on a day-to-day basis. And so some people want it, maybe a little bit more drama involved, like have that conflict. I feel like there is going to be conflict. I feel like there has to be. But I feel like it's going to be the first 10 to 15 minutes and then... We kick off the movie within itself. Um, when you really look at it, you're just not. You're, I'm not getting the movie that I wanted either. I like, in a certain extent, I would have preferred to see Spider-Man have more conflict with Aunt May. Yes, I would. Like, I would like to see that because, like, yet again, this is the first time that they figured this stuff out. Like, oh my God, Aunt May knows that he's Spider-Man. 
and now we're not going to get that much on on that. Um, so on certain extents, for Spider-Man fans, I would understand why there's certain concerns or certain people that are upset because this is like the first time in history on the big screen, and it's being treated as an afterthought. I understand that, but um, I feel like there's just more stories to tell because like at that point, we would kind of be in case and box into a single room scenario, just them yelling at each other, and they want to go somewhere to, somewhere else. So like I'm I'm gonna wait to see what the movie is like, and then I'll have my judgments for there. And then uh, this one is is spicy. He also tweets out why why does Disney treat May like a sex object when she's supposed to be a grounding figure in Peter's life? Um, spicy, spicy, spicy. Um. I mean, define sex object. Like, she's hot, yes. Um, Tony Stark hit on her, yes. But Tony Stark will hit on anybody that's hot. Uh, Aunt May does not need to be white-haired in a fucking walker. Like, she doesn't need to be that old. She, I mean, was she like that in the comics in the original Sam Raimi? For the most part, yes. But you gotta remember, Peter in the movie is like 16 years old. And her, like, your aunt should be like 30s, 40s, at the latest 50s. And, um, that's why I was, I would, I was always confused as a kid with, with the original Spider Man before I knew a lot about him as a character. Because I'm like, is that his grandma? Because, like, supposedly. Uh, Toby Maguire is supposed to be supposedly like 16, 17 in the first one. And his aunt looked like she was about to be turning six, 65 or 70. So there's like a huge fucking gap. Like that's his grandmother and whatever beside the point. So they obviously went with the, the down aging and stuff like that. And uh, so there's going to be some times where adults – Tend to like hit on each other, and Tony Stark's known to be that guy. And now we got Happy Hogan, who is interacting and hitting on uh, Aunt May as well. Um, I don't think that makes her a sex sex object. Uh, she's still going to be a ground figure in Peter's life, as always, because that is her role at the end of the day. That she is a ground core figure to uh, Peter Parker's life. Um, so. Yeah, that's what I have to say with that is that, um, yeah, she she's still going to be there. She's just going to fall in love. I think the fact that she's falling in love is going to be a great new evolution for her character other than just being the ground figure for Peter. Uh, because And same thing with Happy because Happy hasn't been really heavily involved in the MCU before. Like He's been in a number of movies, but he's never been – a crucial part. The most crucial role he had was in the first Homecoming movie. Um, now it looks like he's gonna have a bigger role with this, and I feel like those two are gonna end up interacting and then like falling in love. And I feel like that's also in a weird way gonna help Peter out because he's gonna have a new father figure that's not Tony Stark. Um, so I mean, I'm really interested to see where they're gonna go with that. I never once batted an eye at that. I was like, that's my first reaction was like that would be interesting to see. See how that unfolds. And it's always good to see John Favreau more in the MCU because let's be honest, he he without him the MCU would not exist. Basically, I mean, you, there could have been a director out there who that made Iron Man and made it successful, but like it's because of him in this universe, the MCU is in existence and as popular as it is today. The dude's a film genius. I love what he's done with all his movies in the past couple of years, and I can't wait to see his new Disney show, um, The Mandalorian. But um, yeah, so. Now, let me get to the, t the last thing I have to say about Spider-Man Far From Home, and then we'll call it the show. Uh, this one's going to be re relatively short compared to all the recent ones because I am by myself, and there was only two topics because everything else was kind of, like, not that important. Uh, so last thing i got to talk about with Spider-Man Far From Home is certain people um, are complaining that now that this whole movie is ruined is ruining the end game movie because they're like now we know Spider-Man's going to make it. Um yeah. I have a lot of problems with this uh this these arguments. Yes, there's certain things I could have I would have done differently as Kevin Feige, but whatever. The movie was coming out July 
and you cannot, I repeat, cannot wait to April, not even April, May, because people are like, listen, if, if Avengers if any, uh, Endgame comes out, Avengers Endgame comes out, and the week of fucking Spider-Man Far From Home trailer comes out, people are like, they just ruined Endgame. No matter how close you get to Endgame, if it's not out, if the trailer comes out within a two-month radius of Endgame, people are going to cry spoilers like, I didn't get to see it, I didn't get to see it, whatever. But if you release the day of Endgame comes out, that gives you two months to market your movie. Now, some people will say, but I, don't, I we're going to still see it. It's still going to make a billion dollars. Is it, though? No, it's not. You know why? Because us, the film community, the nerdy community, do not make up 100% of the, the fucking box office. I hate to tell you that. That's just reality. The, we make up probably, probably... 5%. That's on a good day of the box office. The rest of the 95% is the the average movie going audiences. Now, if my mom did not see a trailer to Spider-Man Far From Home until 2 months the movie is about to come out, she's like, "Oh shit. I wish I would have known earlier." And plus, they don't even get most average movie-going audiences don't see the trailer the day it's released. They don't see it until like weeks after it's released because they don't they don't they're not subscribed to YouTube channels that release the trailers and stuff like that, like MovieClips.com or whatever. They do not subscribe to them. They have to see it on the big screen and stuff like that. So when you release it on Avengers Endgame, the day of Avengers Endgame, I can guarantee you they're not going to release it in that theater. They're going to release it in another big budget movie or whatnot. And for between, I don't know off the top of my head, but between Endgame and uh, Far, Far From Home, there's not that many. There, yes, there, there's some movies out there, especially I think there's like Aladdin coming out and stuff like that between those two movies. But still, there's not a lot of marketing you can do to the average movie going audiences. And you are going to be literally spending so much money in such a small window of time is not going to be enough. It's just not going to be enough. So the people that are saying like they should have waited. There, there was nothing they could have done. They, they had to have done it now or never. They were going to release it a couple months ago, but then Sony. I'm pretty sure it was Sony that said, "Nah, we. I would rather us wait." But whatever. Um. So, and the people that are saying, spoilers, spoilers. These are the same fucking people that know that Spider-Man: Far From Home is coming out. So. Let me ask you a question, sir, or or ma'am, who knows? If you saw, the, if you knew that Spider-Man Far From Home was coming out, right? He, he, like, hear me out on this one. If you knew the movie was coming out, why are you crying spoiler that you saw Spider-Man in the movie? What are they going to do? Make Spider-Man without Spider-Man? Hmm? Think about that. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. Now, some people will say, but like, no, 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 the, when we see, yeah, I get it. When you see Endgame, the suspension of disbelief, but like, you're not going to be worried because they know, you know, everything's going to be okay. We, at the end of the day, we knew everything was going to be okay. You knew Spider-Man was going to be okay. You knew Black Panther was going to be okay because Black Panther made almost two fucking billion dollars. If it didn't, if it didn't make two billion dollars, it made, it like was close. No matter what, these characters are coming back for the most part. Everyone who was being snapped, they, they snapped too many people for it to, you think that the universe is going to stay snapped? Really? Hmm. Okay. Whatever. Beside the point. Um, now... Someone, I was uh, debating with somebody on Twitter and whatnot, and I came to a mutual agreement. I'm like, listen, if I was Kevin Feige, what would I have done differently? What I would have done differently was wait, release the movie in November because they released uh, Doctor Strange in November, made $600 million. And for a Doctor Strange movie, that's insane. So there's clearly a market in November, but they released it in July. So that those are the circumstances. Like, like if they release it in November, you can wait until like June or July 
because then you would have that six month window of marketing because that six month window is so crucial to the average movie going audiences. Not because I was kicking and screaming waiting for a trailer is because you got to wait for them. This is business guys. This is business. This is not like, Oh, we got to, you know, cater to the 1% of the fans that already know Spider-Man is going to be coming out, but we'll still hide the trailer because you know, whatever there's, there's, it was not going to happen no matter what happens. But if they released it in November, I could see them wait until June or July to release the trailer. So that's the only thing I would have done differently. But the fact of the matter is they think that they're going to make more money in July than they are going to make it in November. So if they're releasing it in July, which they are, this is the best case scenario. And people are screaming, spoiler, spoiler. Now we know he's not going to die. Now, now we know he's coming back. Let's be fucking honest here, people. You always knew he was coming back. I knew he was coming back. Some people say that's what kind of ruined Infinity War for them. Well, tough, jiggly shit. Like, some people claim that the death of Superman and BBS was powerful, but I knew he was coming back. But the reason why I didn't cry is because, like, it didn't feel earned. Because we knew Superman for two movies. We knew this Spider-Man for a lot longer. When in, eh, I won't say a lot longer, but, like... Like we, we saw him in multiple movies. We saw him in Civil War. We saw him in his own solo movie. We saw him in the Avengers movie. That's that's three movies right there. But the fact of the matter is they they did it in such a more caring way. Whereas in the one in BVS, the death of him, just felt like it was just there to happen. Like there for shock value, there just to set up whatever. And it's fine if you kill Superman off. It could it could be emotional. It could be emotional. Like I was watching the uh, Death of Superman, uh, Doomsday, that one, the most recent animated movie. I got emotional in that one. The reason is because even though it was a one movie thing, I felt the death. I felt the earth shake. And and with the BBS movie, I did not. I just felt like. Wait, he's got a kryptonite spear. Why can't Wonder Woman just chuck it at him? Why can't Wonder Woman do it? No, it was whatever. There was it was just lazy writing. But beside the point, with the, the, this Spider-Man death, some people could say like, "Oh, but we knew he's coming back." That's what a lot of people said. Like, "Oh, the death of Spider-Man was not that shocking because we knew he was coming back." But now people are c constantly kicking, screaming, and crying that saying that now. Oh, now we know he's coming back. I'm like, but you knew he's coming back for a while. Whatever. There's a lot of hypocrisy. And stuff like that that I kind of noticed. I knew Spider-Man was coming back in Infinity War. Like, I didn't even think he was going to die, first off. Because I thought Sony would have a fucking fit. So when he... I hear, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. I start fucking crying. I, my, my heart sank. Because, like, it was such a an, an emotional moment. Because these are characters that we saw for years and years to come. And I didn't expect my favorite superhero of all time to be one of those guys that gets dusted. But he was. And it was an emotionally powerful scene. And it was earned, and that's the most important thing. It was earned. But the people are saying like, oh, no, 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 we knew he was coming back. That's why it wasn't as emotional. Now, these are the same people that are saying that Spider-Man Far From Home trailer ruined the Endgame movie, which is kind of stupid. There's a lot of hypocrisy. But no, I think that's about it, guys. Um, I still, at the end of the day, I fucking love this trailer. I'm excited to see Nick Fury. I'm excited to see... Spider-Man interacting with uh, all these other characters and stuff like that. Um, and I'm excited to see him kind of work off on his own, other, not with Iron Man and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of people that hate Homecoming because he's always working with Iron Man. I understand that. for a certain, To a certain extent, I will understand that. But um, I enjoyed it. But I, to me, it's time to step away from Iron Man and kind of work on his own, which we're gonna, it looks like we're going to get. So I'm really excited to see what we get. That will be it for me, guys. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Gumps underscore videos. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell and whatnot. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.